Hi, my name is Peter Berlenbach and this is my wife Deborah. And we are? We are um, pastors in uh, Abbotsford, British Columbia, Canada. Great place. And um, this is uh, a new venture for us. Yes. Uh, we would rather uh, not be out in the face of the public, but um, we have <coughs> been asked repeatedly by the Lord to share things that he is sharing with us and and it's really important and so you were pushing past our own wants and desires and we are going to be doing some youtube videos and bringing um the word of the lord as he shares it with us mm -hmm. uh, our ministry uh, again is called face-to-face -face ministries and just to give you a little bit of background of who we are, um, you know, and, and what we do out here besides uh, pastor a church. First and foremost, when we came out to the west coast of Canada uh, 12 years ago, God called us many years ago as watchmen. And to give you a little background of what a watchman is, I'm sure probably most of you know what a watchman is, but for those of you who don't, I just like to give a little bit of an ex explanation. Um, in in the Hebrew, according to the Bible, uh, the word for watchman is so pay, and it literally means a sentinel. And we all know what a sentinel is. And so the the Hebrew definition is to look out or spy, to keep watch to lean forward as mm -hmm. if you're looking for mm -hmm. something, to peer into the distance or to observe. In the natural, you know, we know that watchmen were set, they were military people basically, and they were set usually on watchtowers or in specific boundaries to guard borders, to guard gates, to guard towns. And it was a serious position. It was a very serious yes, position yes. because they were the ones who were on the out, on the lookout for any danger that might be approaching the village or the camp. or uh, and, and so they were responsible to sound any alarms and to give a heads up as to what was happening. And, and so they watched and they warned. So in the spiritual sense, the Bible says that prophets uh, were watchmen. And they're, they're a spiritual watchman in, in a sense. And they watched over the souls of people. And Ezekiel 33, 7 says, this is the Lord speaking to uh, Ezekiel, son of man, I have made you a watchman for the people of Israel to hear the word that I speak and give them warning for me. So God called his prophets to, they were the ones who they peered, they leaned into God. They could see things that were in, far off in the distance and they brought the word of the Lord to the people. And in God's nature, his nature is always that of love and reconciliation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. His nature and his desire and his character, he is love. He doesn't just love, he is love. And so he always wants the best for people. He's always extending his hand to bring people closer to himself. That's right. People that believe, people that don't believe. He wants to reveal who he is. And, and he is a loving father. That's it. That's who he is. Mm -hmm. He was such a loving father that he sent his one and only son, Jesus, to come and to die on the cross. And, you know, we know that story. But my point being is, he is love. His motivation is always the motivation of love. Mm -hmm. So he's continuously using people to sound an alarm especially if things are going in in a, a bad way we can see in society today so much chaos and so much confusion and so much struggle and so much division 
in, in between people and you know god wants to gather he wants to gather people together he wants to um uh, give them their proper identity and he wants to reveal who he is to them so so there's a great there's a great uh, responsibility for the prophets and there's also along with that kind of responsibility Deborah there's a great accountability that's correct you know that's yeah. correct yeah and so um, Isaiah 62 6 and 7 says this they also stand speaking of watchmen they also stand in the gap of intercession and spiritual warfare okay, yeah. so he says in Isaiah I have set watchmen on your walls, O Jerusalem, who shall never hold their peace day or night. You who make mention of the Lord, or you who talk to the Lord, do not keep silent and give no rest until he establishes, until he makes Jerusalem a praise in the earth. Isaiah 6, 62, 6 and 7. So, um, I said all of that to identify, you know, part of who we are, a large part of who Peter and I are and how we function. And, and it's as watchmen. So we uh, have a big heart for people. We have a big heart for our nation of Canada. We have a big heart for Israel. We have a big heart for uh, many nations of the world, for all people. And, and also, I, I want to add into that, I, I'm hoping I'm not stealing any thunder here, no. but we also um, were given, or we are also a, a huge part of being carriers of his glory, his presence. Because in, in the midst of it all, in the, in the midst of it all, no matter how you cut it, if we don't have his presence, and all through the Bible it shows when his presence was there, when his presence wasn't there. That's right. If we don't have his presence then we have absolutely nothing to say, nothing right. to give. We aren't even, we don't have any kind of life to present to anyone without his presence. So in essence, Deborah, you and I are, are carriers of his presence, of his glory. And and everybody who knows God is, is a carrier absolutely. of his presence. Absolutely. Because the Bible says the Godhead bodily uh, dwells. dwells in yep. us and yep. in him we live and move and have our being. Yep. So we are called, everyone is called that knows Christ, is called to be a carrier of the glory yes. of God. Yes. And so we've been called to lead people into the rest of God. And for many years, Peter and I, we knew God, but we did not know what rest looked like. And so uh, what that looked like in our lives, not knowing how to enter into that rest was a lot of striving and a lot of performing. And and so God, God brought us through a series of, things and and just revelation into um an encounter with the father heart of god which changed our lives and it changed the course of who we were and what we preached we always preached jesus but but understand that uh because of the freedom that this encountering over and over again with the father heart of god uh, it changed us. It changed who we. It changed who we were forever, and and so we've been called to lead people into that rest because again, God wants to see people set free. He wants to see you and I functioning, not just existing, but thriving, and 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 functioning at our highest level of potential that He has called us to function in. It's called destiny. Destiny, yes. And so he wants us to live out our destiny, not just, you know, making it through day by day or doing a grind, but he wants us to thrive. He wants us to walk in continual peace. Did you know that you can walk in continual peace, even in the midst of chaos and everything that's going on in your life and everything that's going on in the world today? Today is a perfect example of how so many people are, they're grappling. They're, they're, they're grappling to find out what their identity is. And they're doing it in a, in a, you know, a plethora of, of different avenues. And, um, they all want to know their identity. People are desperate and crying. Who am I? Why am I here? What was I made for? 
May, may, I, may I just intervene yes. here a little mm -hmm. bit? Uh, you know, we are taping this. It's not live yet. We haven't gone to the live stream yet, so we're recording this. And, and so, like, this is our first attempt of doing what we're doing. But as Deborah was speaking, uh, I was writing, and uh, just what she was saying, and she, I want her to continue on that thought. I want you to continue on this thought when I'm finished. There's, a, there's someone watching this, and, and his name is Aloysius. It's a very uncommon name, Aloysius. Usually they're called Alan or Al, but you were given the name Aloysius. But you're going by Al. But your, but you right now are, as you're watching this, you're you're inside your heart. You're seeking for truth. You you are looking for some answers. You're seeking truth to life. You don't feel content. You feel uneasy. You know there's more to life, and um, we believe in through this. Uh, as, as we're presenting this to you, you're going to come to know what that is. And so you need to look no further. Just listen to what Deborah's going to have to say in the next couple of minutes, because this is for you, especially for you. So going back to talking about rest, um, you know, and I'm addressing a lot of people in the body of Christ because, um, y you know, we, we see people grappling for identity in, in the world and, and rightly so that that we expect but we also see many many people in the body of christ grappling for the same thing they're grappling and with the question of you know we hear it all the time well what's my ministry what's you know what has god called me to and really the answer really is is not what your ministry is and not what your you know anointing is the answer is who are you? Do you identify yes. as a servant of God or do you identify as a son or a daughter of God? That's it. Because sons and daughters are very different than servants or let's bring it to the 21st century employees. Do you have the same relationship with your boss as you do with your parents or with your father? And so it's all a matter of, you know, who? how do we see ourselves and have we encountered the father heart of God that has really solidified in our being who we are, that we don't have to strive. We don't have to get approval. And we see a lot of the same thing in the church as we see out there in, in the, in the world. That's it. People competing, you know, there's so much competition. Be why is there competition? Because people want recognition why do people want recognition it's not always a selfish yeah. thing people want recognition because they want to feel like they belong that's it they want to feel like they have a purpose they want to feel like they can identify with something and so you know they carry that in from their their past and they start to do the same kind of thing in in a church setting and so you know they vie for position they want to lead work. They want to, everybody wants to be a worship leader. Everybody wants to be a preacher. Everybody wants to be a teacher because they think somebody who has platform recognition is better than they are, is more important than they are. And that is so non-biblical. Let me just tell you, that is so non-biblical. That is a lie that many in the body of Christ have embraced. And it is a lie, and I want to break that off of you today. That's, That's it. That comes from a religious spirit. That comes from wounding from the past that you need to get healed from in Jesus' name. So I just break those lies of identity issues off of you today. And I say that your identity is hidden in Christ. Mm -hmm. You're seated in heavenly places yes. with Christ Jesus. You're not seated at the back row. You're not seated back there in the nursery. You're not seated in an unseen place. You are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's your position. And so we want to teach people what their position in Christ is. And what I love about the kingdom of God, Deborah, is, is that, you know, God loves me most. He loves me the most, but the beautiful thing, Deborah, is, is he loves you the most. Mm -hmm. There's, he has no favorites. Mm -hmm. We are all loved to the, to the outer That's limits, right. to the limits that God can, can give. He loves us the same mm -hmm. and there's nothing that we can do. There's nothing that we cannot do to have that love given to us. 
He loves us. Mm -hmm. He just pours out his love. That's how much he loves us. And, Amen. And it's a, he's not a respecter of anyone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. And so that's one of the things that, uh, you know, that, that we've been called to do, to, to stand and to watch mm -hmm. and to pray and to stand in the gap and to intercede, uh, you know, for our nation, for the nations, for Israel. And, um, you know, often that, that comes uh, with a strong prophetic gift, which uh, Peter and I uh, both operate in. Peter is um, a seer prophet, so he has many open uh, visions, and he sees into the spiritual realm, and he is taken up to heaven, and and all kinds of those awesome encounters that I love and I would love to have. But you know, sometimes, sometimes, Deborah, um, I don't like being in that position because some of the things that I see are, are sometimes they're terrifying, sometimes they're beautiful. <laughs> and sometimes being in that position is not a comfortable position to be in, but that's what God does. He gives us the grace to, when we're in those kind of positions, to see beyond us, to see what he sees, and then to get his heart. Well, because it's our... not about <clears throat> us. No. It's not about you and how comfortable no. you are. It's not about me and how comfortable I am. It's about what does he want uh, to say, you know, through right. the people that are living and walking on the earth that follow him. And... Um, yeah, and so, uh, you know, I love to, to, to be in the Word, and that's sort of my, I love to teach the Word and, 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 and bring that balance, uh, you know, into the prophetic, because yes. you're dealing with lots yes. of visions and stuff, and, yes. you know, sometimes when we talk to people about visions and, and heavenly encounters and experiences, they kind of look at you like, you know, they got the, the big, puppy, puppy the, eyes. Not, well, not the puppy eyes, the, the deer in the headlight <laughs> eyes. And then there's just dead yes. silence afterwards. And, and nobody I knows know. really what to say because, or they're wondering, what did you just say? What did you just say? Yeah. But anyway, so, so that's a little bit about who we are. So, um, uh, one of the things that we wanted to share with, uh, with everybody today, and I think it's really important um, in light of what's happening in the United States. We have been really praying and interceding for, for the United States. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we have friends and family there. Yes. Uh, we, we love, you know, our sister country, yes. the U.S., and, and all of God's people, you know, that are living in that great country. And, you know, Canada and the United States are so closely tied I, I, I don't know, sometimes I think people don't really think that what happens in America really has much effect, impact, here. impact on Canada, but that could be further from the truth. That's it. And so we care about our borders. We care about what's happening south of the border. And um, uh, Peter had uh, a, a dream in August of 2020. And the Lord instructed him in the dream that he was not to share it with anyone, that he was to seal it, and, and it would be uh, presented at a certain time. And the time would be immediately after the election, a day after the election. Now, because of, um, because of all the chaos that's going on and the discrepancy with the, the counting the ballots, it was kind of confusing. So... He actually waited until yesterday to actually open. I didn't even know what was in the letter. Um, and so he is going to share it because I think it's really important. Now, I, having said that, I want to interject and I want to say this so that nobody mixes our words or twists our words. Uh, people don't always hear with clarity. So I'm just going to pray right now, Lord, give those with ears to hear. Mm hmm ears right now to hear what we're saying what you're saying because it's your word so what you are saying that there's no misinterpretation that that there's not going to be uh mm -hmm. something different come out of it than than what it was meant to be or twisting of or words. twisting of words we just bind up those things and we just pray that that word would come forth in purity father mm -hmm. and in truth um the way that you want it to and so uh, we're not taking a political stand. No. Nope. So we want to make that clear. Uh, we live in Canada, 
uh, we have a prime minister, you have a president in the United States. Um, having said that, you know, we are praying and we are believing that, mm -hmm. you know, God has his way. Mm -hmm. And and the Bible says, you know, we, we, we see in part and we prophesy, prophesy in part. In part. Yes. And um, he knows the whole picture. A while ago, in one of these visitations, the Lord, the Lord said to Peter, um, "You're not the only part. You are a small part, but you're a very important part. But I have other parts, and the Bible refers to us all being one body. Although there's, you know, I don't know how many hundreds of parts there are in the body. I, I don't know that." Um, biologically I don't know that but I know that there are many and I know that you need all the parts of your body to function in health in and whole. wholeness yes, yes, so absolutely. we need each other and so we are not saying we're right they're wrong it, it's worth there's no competition we're just bringing being the part obedient and being obedient and to word. bring what the Lord is saying um, it's a sobering word that we need to pay attention to Bible says in Amos 3 7 surely the sovereign Lord does nothing without revealing his plan to his servants to the his prophets yeah. so God tells the prophets what he's about to do and he may not tell he doesn't tell one prophet everything and so it's important that we not you know do what they did in the Bible I'm following Paul and I'm following Apollos we need to grow up and get over that stuff. That's it. Just let me be straight with you. <laughs> Shake that you off. You know, we, 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 yeah. are called, we are called to get the bride ready. Yes. And God wants a mature woman for his son. Let me just say that again. God wants a mature woman for his son. He's not preparing an adolescent, rebellious. Rolling around in the mud. Self-will, temper tantrum, <laughs> adolescent it. girl for his son. He is preparing an equal for his son. That's it. An equal. Come an on. An equal. She will be, yes. the Bible says, the express image of, of the son. Yes. What did the Bible for say sure about Jesus? Us. That he was yes. the express image of the father. Yeah. So we. it's time to grow up, body of Christ. Yes. It's time to grow up. And you're going to hear us talk a lot in the future about what that looks like and what we can do to grow up into Christ as the Bible calls us to do. So, so we Peter, want you, we want to help you to help us, to help you to help us, <laughs> right? To help you to help us to grow in the things of God and mature. Amen. That's it. So there's a lot of, I've had a lot of visions, a lot of dreams, but Deborah and I really felt that, and they, they're really very important, all the dreams and visions and prophet, prophetic words God's given us very important very timely but this one here we really believe we need to read out so no further ado i'm going to read this so this dream i had it was august 14th 2020 and it was around the time when they had just picked joe biden to be ahead of the De democratic party just to get the feel of where this is coming from kind of I was taken up into heaven, into the heavens, and I found myself standing looking at the creation of God below me. I looked closely to his handiwork, and in the midst of all that I saw, I saw the earth spinning. It was not spinning its normal spin, but the earth seemed to be spinning faster than normal. As I watched with awe, I saw the Lord growing, I saw the world growing dimmer and dimmer after each spin. And I had a concern that something was not right. Of all the countries that represented the earth, the USA stood out the most in the shadows of darkness and that loomed over the earth. My eyes then were taken down to the US to the nation's capital, Washington, DC. And there was an important event that was taking place. It was the US elections for 2020 between Donald Trump and Joe Biden. And what took place on that day and the result of the election and the events surrounding the final results. I saw Joe Biden win the presidency election for the USA. The win sparked controversy among the people of this nation and caused a chain of events that would cripple the US. So we look at what's going on now. 
I saw many cities under siege with violence on the streets. Fire and smoke billowed from the cities abroad in the land. From the east coast to the west coast, from the north border to the south border, there was burning, looting, wounding, and killings. Because of this, the borders to the nation were securely closed, closed by the pandemic that was still at large and by the violence that occurred because of the result of the election. I saw people filled with fear for their lives ex exiting the U.S. to seek refuge in Canada or into, the, or into Mexico. Then I, saw a diff I, then I saw different factions rising up. And because of the lack of police, the country was in a state of panic, disarray, and desperation. And these factions gained popularity among the people as fear grew, and these factions were a voice that added much fuel to the fire that already existed because of the outcome of the 2020 elections. I saw slaughtering of innocent people and sides taken just like it was in the Civil War back in the history books. I'm sure you can remember those and reading about those. Um, sorry, I lost my place here. Here it is here. Then I heard a voice say this. The stock market will first be affected by this. Then the economy will be badly shaken. People will say we have only seen these bad things happen from afar off in other lands. But now the D-Day has come that it has landed on our shores. They will come from all over. From the east they will come and flood the land, which at first I found puzzling because on one side people were flocking out of the U.S., and yet on the other hand they were invading the country. There will be wars on the streets between friends and families. A great separation of society will take place, and there will also be great tensions between nations abroad. The United Nations will become unstable, and will be divided among themselves and will take sides and lines will be drawn in the sand. Even Canada will try to take advantage over this turmoil and because of this Canada will be drawn into the scheme of things that are to come. Israel will come to the forefront of all of this and come under fire and will take great persecution over the results of this election and great billows of smoke will rise from her cities Jerusalem will be the first to feel the pressure of this persecution and Israel's greatest ally, the USA, will fail her because of the condition of the state she is in. The Lord says, now the great shaking begins and will affect everything. Even the church will be shaken like never before and only the true church will rise from the ashes, but take heed. The church will see the hand of the Lord either in judgment or mercy. This will be event in time where there will be a separation of prophets, the ones of God and the false ones. Lines will be drawn in the sand and tribulation will come, but it will not be the great tribulation for that will come in due time. I, the Lord, will establish my glory over my people and when these events take place, there will be a great bringing in of the harvest but also a great falling away of the church. Mm -hmm. Many will abandon their faith in me because they will feel I have abandoned them. But the truth be made known, they have abandoned me. You will hear words coming from the caves in the mountains, and the voices will say, come here or go there, but those voices will not be of me. Out of this election will come wars, but first the wars will not see guns, but will be done through the economy. And there will be those who will be sanctioned by the U.S. And great despair will rest on these lands. The U.S. will block the entrance of these lands via the sea. And tensions will build even greater. There will be famine and disease crop up from these events. And the cry of people will not be heard by man, nor by my ear, says the Lord. Then in my dream I cried aloud for the Lord to stop what I was seeing in the spirit. My heart could not take it any more. I felt a great sadness come over me. I then said to the Lord, how can this be? He answered me and said, because my people will not listen and hearken unto my voice in this time. I then said to the Lord, 
Why are you doing this? And the Lord replied, I have not done this. I have only opened up the doors to the nations. But this was brought on by the true hearts of wickedness of people of this land, just like it had been throughout his, the history of my people in my word. Just like in the days of David and King Saul, I will give the people the wish of their heart, but they will not like the outcome that will present itself to them. I've always said and I never, that I would never abandon my people nor forsake them. That has always been my promise. I will deliver my people through this storm and will again part the sea for my people to walk through this troubled time and they will find refuge and comfort in me. Again, I will establish my glory in and over my people and where my people are, they will overcome. I then was taken up into the, into the heavens before the throne and I saw a light about the throne that was intense. I heard a voice say, now worship me and never stop worshiping me. Love me and never stop loving me. I then was instructed to write this down and seal the envelope and put it away. And the day after the results of the election to bring it out and open the seal and present it. The Lord said, remember these are only things to come and these events will take place over a small window of time. These events are not just given to tell, uh, to tell of, the, of things to come, but are also to be a tool to those used to open up the ears of people that are shut tight to hearing my voice. And this will be the very thing that will do it. Then I will speak the greater things to you for the church, and you will speak and present the things I will tell you, and these things will be part of the blueprint of the things that will come and will be. Through all of this, the separation of the wheat and the weeds in the church will be established, such as in the time of when Jesus, my son, roamed the earth proclaiming the gospel of my love to the world. The church did not and would not receive it, but there was a people who embraced my word and my love. This will be no different, for out of the ashes will arise my true body, my bride, and out of the ashes, I, the Lord God, will reign. Mm. I then woke, and I wrote these things down. So what do you think of that, Deborah? Well, you know, it's, it's a sobering word. Um, and, you know, we don't want to come across as doom and gloom. I believe that it is a warning from the Lord. I believe that there are things because he said it that you will see begin to happen um you know even as we speak in the united states again you know i go back to what is the heart of god the heart of god is calling for his people to return <coughs> and you know we might say well what do you mean his people to return well i think that it's no secret in the church in this hour we see, and I've heard it said, I've been a Christian for over 40 years, and I've been hearing it for over 40 years, where people refer to the, the by and by and, you know, the powerful things that people saw in healing and deliverance and this and that and, and, and you know, the signs and the miracles and all yeah. those kinds of yeah. things. And we're always looking back at the back instead of what are we doing today if if you know i can only speak really for north america because i'm north american i live in the part of america known as canada and i know what the church is like here and it's a very apathetic um group at in in whole sure we might do a lot of good things and and do some community stuff and and come together and worship the Lord. But you can ask anybody in any church, where is the power? Do you see the same things? In fact, Jesus said, you'll do better things. You'll do greater things than I ever did. Are we seeing that in our own lives today? And, mm -hmm. and if, we, if the answer is no, and, and if we're walking around riddled in fear, which a large portion of the church, you know, people are so afraid. There's such a, 
a, a fear atmosphere everywhere. And I deal with a lot of people, believers, and people are afraid. And if you're walking in fear, I, I, I'll be, I'll, I'll, I'll say this, if you're walking in fear, you're not walking in faith. That's right. That's right. The two can't coincide That's it. together. That's it. And, and yes, you know, we are in the middle of a pandemic and yes, yeah. there's all kinds of lunacy Bad happening things going on. in the world yes. and it's increasing. Yes. But God so promises that he will hide us under the shadow. Well, what does the shadow refer to? You know, the shadow refers to when you, when you want to, if you want to be in somebody's shadow, you got to get pretty darn close to them. Yes. You know, a shadow is I want to be in your shadow, Deborah. A shadow isn't <laughs> 10 miles away. A shadow doesn't cast no. 10 miles away. you got to get up super close. you got to be in the right position to get the right sun and everything else. Yes, You do. You, you got to be close to somebody yes. to walk in their shadow. Absolutely. And he says, if you're in my shadow, I'll hide you. I'll hide you under my feathers. And, and you know, that to me speaks of intimacy with God. And if we aren't walking that close, intimate relationship with God, if we're not spending quality time, everybody wants, you know, ask a married couple. One of the most important things in a marriage is quality time. I want you to spend time with me. In the morning, I want Peter to, I don't want him to sit up here at the counter and drink his coffee. I want him to come down into the living room and I want him to drink his coffee with me and I want to talk with him first thing in the morning and 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 share, you know, share things with each other at the beginning of the day and at various times of the day. I want to just spend quality time with him, not running here, not running there, not whatever, whatever, but, but spending quality time. Sit. And God wants the same thing. The Father wants to be intimate with that's, you that's it. and he that's wants it. you to desire the same that's intimacy it. with him and to share that quality time uh you know in exodus our ministry is called face-to-face -face ministries and and um exodus i believe that god led us to to because that was not our first choice to call the ministry and 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 yet that's what we ended up calling it god directed us to do that and it, it's from exodus 33, 33 where it says Moses, God spoke with Moses face to face as a man speaks with his friend. That's the kind of relationship that our awesome God wants to have with us. He doesn't want you to call him sir. He wants you to call him daddy. That's it. He wants you to call him lover. Jesus is our lover. He's That's our bridegroom. It. Yes, he's our savior. And I'm not taking anything away from his sovereignty. But what wife calls her husband, I don't call my husband Mr. Berlinback in your dreams. <laughs> you master. Yeah, master. I don't call my husband Mr. Berlinback. I call him babe. That's what we call each other. Babe, babe and babes. That's that's it. And and so this is this is what the Lord to me out of that dream it's a call for the body of Christ to return. You know, we've been praying for a gazillion years, it seems like, for revival. Do we want to pay the price of what revival looks like? Because revival isn't some flip thing that's going to happen. It's not just this party. Oh, we want revival. Oh, we want revival. Oh, we should, we should, we should, we should, wish. Wishing for revival is not going to make revival happen. Revival is, first of all, personal you got, starts, you have to get revival right there i have to get revival yeah. and 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 then it spreads and but the body of christ god is is in in the midst of awakening trying to awaken his bride's kind of sleepy she's really sleepy she's almost comatose in fact but he wants to wake her up he wants to wake the bride up to come and get ready and prepare, you know, for that wonderful day that we're all waiting for. So basically that's, that's what we wanted to share. Um, again, you know, many prophets and prophetic voices have been declaring, you know, Trump's win. And we don't know We're we're hoping and praying that, that it works out for president Trump. 
we believe that, you know, that was God's fit. That's who God has called. But just because there's a blip in the radar doesn't mean it's not going to happen. And Just refer again to Saul and David. So don't go getting yeah. all offended and don't go, you know, having a hole punched in your balloon and losing the air. We don't know what is going to happen. God didn't tell Peter that. He just said, he showed him a certain set of things that were going to take place and said to share it. So, so that's what he has done and that's mm. what we're going to be doing um, moving in the future. And so anyway, we bless you guys. I would like to say something before we... Yes, yeah. absolutely. Um, I, I want to just take a, a cut, just a couple moments because, you know, we really believe in the prophetic. We really believe that God speaks to the prophets. We believe in the fivefold ministry. We believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We believe all that stuff. Uh, I always say, if you have a problem with that, take it up with God. <laughs> but we believe in that, and I really believe that God speaks to prophets, and prophets can speak to the church. I mean, God speaks to everybody, and everybody should hear the voice of God. Am I correct, Deborah? Mm -hmm. Everybody should hear the voice of God. Everybody shouldn't depend, anybody should not depend on somebody, only somebody else to hear from God. We need to hear from God on our own. That's right. Everybody has that opportunity. Why? It's because the same Spirit of God that lives in me, lives in Deborah, lives in you. And so we are firm believers in that. Mm -hmm. And we believe that we can carry the presence, and so can you carry the presence of God. And we really believe in the prophetic. We really believe there's a lot of uh, um, uh, foundation in the prophetic. It gives stability. And my hats are off to the prophets. Anyways, I just want to say this. There's a woman, there's a lady out there. Your name is Sylvia, and uh, you are you have extreme headaches at the most inconvenient times. You suffer these extreme migraine headaches, and the doctors don't know what causes these headaches. But the Lord says to me, it's stress. It's stress. It's stress that's causing it, and the stress comes, and this this will weed out a lot of people when I tell you where it comes from. This is coming from your kids, your husband, your job, your duties, and all the responsibilities that you have. They're just piled on you, and you don't know where to begin, where to start, where to end. You just have no idea, and this stress comes on you, this anxiety comes on you, and you get these extreme, extreme headaches. It's because of the stress. Well, today we want to pray a release. From that stress and we want to turn that release into rest so Deborah can you take just one minute and tell us about rest well I think I did that earlier okay. on I don't really want to go okay. over that again but coming into a place of rest is you know the the Bible says come to me all you who are uh, weary and heavy laden mm -hmm. and I will give you rest and we need to just bring all of that stress and yes. all of those worries and concerns uh, to Jesus. Get and divine exchange. we lay them. That's yeah. right. That's right. He, we give him all of our turmoil and he gives us peace. He gives us shalom. That's it. Nothing missing, nothing broken. You'll hear me talk about that a lot. It's, it's, it's woven into my DNA and I'll share more about that in another video. But um, if I can just pray for that lady. I, yes. Father, I, I pray for um, Sylvia. Sylvia. And mm -hmm. Lord, I pray that you would bring her to that place mm -hmm. of trust where she can trust you, Lord. I pray that you would manifest um, your presence in Sylvia's life mm -hmm. right now. God, I believe that even though we're on an internet and I don't know where this person is, but you know exactly where she is. That's, that's why you are God. You see everybody at every moment, every second, every breath that they breathe. And you care. You're there. And so, Father, I pray for Sylvia. I just pray shalom over her whole being right now in the name of Jesus. Mm. We thank you for bringing her into that place of yes. shalom. Yes. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. I pray, Father, you just wrap your arms around yes. her that she would physically be able to sense your presence washing over her like warm water, Lord, covering her from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. Lord, and I pray that you would help her to not continue to pick up the burdens and to pile them on her back and mm -hmm. to where it affects her physical well-being. 
I pray, Father, that she would kiss Earth, continuously let go. let go and release mm -hmm. it to you, yes. that there would indeed be a divine exchange. Yes. Father, your peace for her burdens, yes. Lord, your, your lightness, your ease mm -hmm. for her burden, for her heaviness in Jesus' name. And so, you know, sometimes practically, it, it, we just have to keep handing it over. It'll always try to come back and climb back on our back and weigh us down. And at that point, we just have to say, no, Lord, that's yours. I gave it to you. I don't want it back. I gave it to you and you exchanged my burden for your ease, for your lightness. Your yoke is mm -hmm. easy and your burden is light. And so mm -hmm. you, you have to declare that. Uh, over your life. So I just bless you today in Jesus' name. And I also want to just take a moment to uh, to say to those who are watching, there might be someone watching that doesn't know Jesus and um, they are looking for something, they're searching, their heart is searching for something and you just don't know what it is. You don't feel a completeness in your life. You don't feel satisfied. You don't feel happy. You don't feel the joy. You don't feel peace. You don't feel any of that. You just feel all the turmoil that's around you and you're searching. I want to say this, that was my life. That was Deborah's life. That was many people's lives where we were just not satisfied. And then one day we met a friend and his name was Jesus. And he came and he spoke to our hearts and he gave us life. And we received Jesus in our life. We said, Jesus, yeah, you know, I believe what you say. I believe. And the moment we said we believe, come into my life forgive me for being where i was he came into our hearts and he changed us he changed the way we saw things he changed the way we felt and all of a sudden we were not unsatisfied anymore we were satisfied we began to see life as it truly was it was life was really joy life was really peace life was really love it was exciting it really was good and god showed us the other side and the other side was him and it's beautiful and I want you to know that in the midst of where you are, you have no hope. Your hope is very little or it's gone. You hope deferred. But he is one that can bring hope back. And he can give you faith again. He can give you faith to believe. And so we want to just take a moment to pray. And then we're going to finish up. And we're going to come back again. Uh, in, we're going to do some of these things here on, on YouTube and stuff. And we're, we're, we're going to come back. So I want to pray. For those that don't know Jesus and really are searching and you, you say, okay, you know, I want to I I meet this Jesus. And all you have to do is say, Jesus, come into my life. Mm -hmm. Come into my broken heart. Yes, Lord. I believe. Because the Bible says, he says, it, the Bible says that if you believe, mm -hmm. you shall be saved. That I believe. And he, and that's all you have to do. There's no science, no big formulas, no standing on your head and spit out wooden nickels kind of thing. It's just as simple as that. And then wait. But I want you to encourage you. Find yourself a Bible. Get yourself a Bible and read the book of John. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. You'll, in other words, you'll live eternally with God or eternally without him. God did not send his son into the, to the world to condemn the world, but through his son, the world might be saved. That's you, my brother. That's you, my sister. It's you. And he did it for you. All for you. So uh, we just pray you would rest in that. And as far as it's concerned, Deborah, I think we are finished yep. here today. Thanks and for we joining wanna, us. Thanks for joining us. We love you so much. We do. We love you. We we want to hear from you. Mm -hmm. You know, it isn't about likes and subscriptions because I don't even know if we, we don't even know anything about that stuff, right? All we want to know, all we want to say is we love you. And we are hoping that through what we're doing here, we can have a relationship with each other that you would love us. Because God said, love him and love one another. God bless. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.